Hello everyone, Derek Johnson with Tatango.com. This today is about uh, T-Mobile's new November uh, code of conduct for mobile messaging. There's one specific thing that I wanted to point out and explain. Uh, in September, uh, they released a new code of conduct and there was one section in the code of conduct which created a lot of uh, concern for SMS marketers and brands. They've since, uh, in the November version, which just got released, they've since kind of pulled back a little bit. So I'm going to explain, you know, what all happened. So in September, and I'm going to read from my screen up here, uh, in September, they released the code of conduct. And in uh, section 3.1, or 3.10 actually, uh, they, the section is called Transitioning Messaging Programs to a New Application Address. And new application address is essentially a fancy word for phone number. So if you're using a long code and you'll move to a short code or a short code to a long code, long code to a 1-800, 1-800 to a short code, whatever it is, uh, that is what this section is talking about. Now, uh, most SMS providers or brands have been kind of following most of these rules. So, you know, on the old, let's say you're going from a long code to a short code. On the long code, uh, you know, before you leave the long code, you need to send out a final message saying, you know, hey, we're going to message you from, you know, a short code going forward and here's the phone number, which is just good kind of standard practice. Uh, then you are have to disclose the program name or product description, opt out information. So, you know, if you don't want to continue messaging, reply stop. And then other important details regarding the transition, customer care, contact information, whatever the brand decides, essentially. Most brands and SMS providers are kind of following those guidelines, at least for the last 13 plus years that I've been doing SMS marketing. Then on the new phone number, which in this case would be a short code, uh, this is where it, it kind of, it got concerning for a lot of brands and a lot of marketers and SMS providers. So it said, uh, these are the things that need to be in the message. Uh, recurring message program name or product description. So, hey, this is our new phone number. Again, this is, you know, Wendy's or Chipotle or Macy's, whatever it is, you know, put the brand name in there or the product description. Uh, opt out information. So text stop to opt out customer care contact information and then message frequency dis disclosure. So we're going to send you, you know, five messages a week or just recurring messages weekly. You know, a lot of you can kind of intermix those things depending on, you know, what your legal counsel says. Um, then this was the sticking point that everybody kind of freaked out about. Uh, so they said new opt-in confirmation request. So essentially what T-Mobile was saying in the September code of conduct was if you are going to switch phone numbers on consumers, go from a short code to a long code, 1-800 to short code, whatever it is, uh, you have to essentially re-opt in the subscribers. Uh, this is horrible in email marketing, in SMS marketing, whatever it is, re-opting in subscribers is kind of tough for the consumer, tough for the brand because you lose a lot of subscribers. Um, but this is what T-Mobile wanted in the rules, so you got to follow the rules. Um, it just has been announced though, and I'm going to bring it up here, T-Mobile has uh, put out a new set of uh, guidelines, a new code of conduct. This is V2.2, uh, which is released in November. This is when I'm filming this, uh, this video. Let's see what date it is. November 18th, 2020. Uh, so this just got put out. Essentially the same kind of thing, but at the very, um, on the second message, on the new phone number, let's say you're going from long code to short code. So this is the short code. It has removed, T-Mobile has removed uh, the requirement to re-opt in mobile subscribers. The only thing that's required on the second message, on the short code, let's say, is the program name or product description, opt out information, which is always good to put in there, uh, customer care, contact information, and message frequency disclosure. So what's missing here is the, uh, the re-opt in kind of statement. Essentially, they put it as a new opt in confirmation request. So that is no longer needed. Um, you know, my take most likely what happened here is everybody right now is uh, moving uh, their messaging campaigns from shared short codes. A lot of brands are still using shared short codes. Those shared short codes are being, you know, shut down or, you know, terminated or, you know, there is going to be a sunset date for shared short codes. 
So a lot of brands and a lot of SMS providers are moving uh, their clients or planning on moving their clients to either dedicated short codes or long codes, maybe even 1-800 texting, whatever, whatever the client wants. But that would be very, very hard if all of these you know, brands, organizations, groups that are using shared short codes would have to re-opt in their mobile subscribers. Um, so I think T-Mobile got a lot of feedback, I bet, about this, and that is why this change is happening. Um, and it also goes the other way, too. A lot of brands are starting out on a long code or maybe a 1-800 number uh, just because they're really easy to provision. And then they're moving to a short code, a dedicated short code, because you can't you know, get a, a shared short code anymore. Uh, so they're moving to a short code. But that, you know, is a horrible process for a brand if they build up, you know, a SMS subscriber database really quickly, but then they got to re-opt everybody in on the short code that just doesn't work for most, you know, brands or organizations. So anyway, this is uh, just kind of a recap. So in September, uh, T-Mobile came out with their code of conduct. They said, if you're going to move phone numbers on your customers, you have to get them to re-opt in just today, at least today is when I got it. Uh, T-Mobile has come out with a new code of conduct, which is version 2.2. The last one was 2.1, uh, and it is November 18th. And in this one, they removed the requirement uh, to re-opt in your subscribers when you move them from a phone number to another phone number, short code, long code, 1-800, whatever it is. Um, so I think this is good uh, for the brands. I think it makes it easier for them to transition between phone numbers. Again, I wouldn't transition every week or every month to a different phone number. I think that would be very confusing for the customer. And I think your opt-outs just would go up. Uh, but you know, if you've been using a short code for a long time and you want to move to a dedicated short code, you know, now it's much easier. You know, if you want to move from a long code to a short code, much easier. If you're on a shared short code and you need to go to a long code, much easier. So I think this is good for everybody involved. Um, so I will, I'll try to drop uh, below um, some links to the documents so you can see kind of the difference. But that that was one of the big changes between the documents um, and something that was causing a lot of pain in the industry. So you can see where this change came from. Uh, again, my name is Derek Johnson with Tatango.com. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel where we post all kinds of videos like this about SMS marketing, uh, youtube.com forward slash Tatango. All right, thanks everyone.